Is your cistern broken? Is your cistern broken? For those of you that may not be old enough to know what that is, that is a place that holds water. It's a place that, that uh, helps uh, retain water so that you have something to draw from. And uh, it has the ability to keep water. Uh, and uh, in Jeremiah, if you know anything about Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a prophet to a nation of Israel that was rebellious, going their own way, doing their own thing, completely, once again, just letting uh, God go and grabbing on to everything in this world. And uh, today, I, I, I pray that you're uh, prepared and ready not only to receive from God, but to take what God's given you and then be able to serve it out to one another in everyday life. What we're doing here this morning is wonderful, but how many of you know that there's a lot of people outside our church right now and outside where you live and where you work, they have no idea what God's like. And they need a, a small drink of water. You don't need to douse them. You don't need to dunk them. You don't need to submerse them. You just need to give them a little bit at a time. And you learn to serve this wonderful truths that God has shown you. And, uh, but it's hard to do that if you're not full yourself. If you don't have anything in you, you have nothing to give. And how many of you know God wants you and I to be full, just like Jesus was? Everywhere Jesus went, he received all that the Father had, and he wanted to continue to pour that out to those that he met, and he did that. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the day when you come to church and we can't even do anything else but testify because of what God's doing. Because that's how good God is, and that's how much God wants to use you in your everyday life. And I know that church is important and has its function, but there will come that day when we won't be able to do anything else but just testify of all that God has done. And I look forward to that day. But in Jeremiah chapter 2, I'd like you to begin reading with me in verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, go and pro proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion of your youth and how as a bride you loved me and followed. It's going to happen. We can offer God all we want and God will look at it and say, I can't use it. I can't do that. You know why? Because it goes against my word. And these people knew that knew better. He said, they knew better than to do some of the things they did, but they still did it anyway because they did not hang on to the, to the truths of God's word. Let me read verse 13 again just because it's so powerful. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot hold water. I don't know about you today, but if we looked at their condition, we'd say, wow, what a, what a sorry state of believers in that day. But if you take a look at our own selves this morning, am I broken today? And I can't ask for you. You have to ask God, what's broken in me that needs healing today? What's part of me that needs to be rearranged today? What part of me has to be given to the Lord so that he can take it and give us healing back? Things that cause us to heal up so when I speak, I don't hurt you. I don't bruise you. I don't destroy you. When I think, I don't have to battle some thoughts that absolutely are not a part of God. Anybody ever struggle with your thoughts? <laughs> yeah. So we have to learn how to think. We have to take every thought captive. Philippians says that. Take every thought captive and make it obedient. Wow. If you've ever had children, you know there's times you have to make them do something. They don't want to, but you have to make them. Why? Because they have to learn that that is not an acceptable behavior that's going to get the mom and dad's blessing. And so there has to be things in my life I have to recognize that I can't talk that way, I can't think that way, I can't even act that way. Why? Because I can't get God's blessing if I want to do it that way. I have to learn how to let God transform me and change me so that I don't become a cistern that can't even hold the life-giving water, the life-giving, changing water that I need in my own life as well as what I offer people. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of, a lot of people quoting a lot of old time. It can be spiritual. You'll have a gut feeling. You know something's up. 
And so there's this really important thing that he says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Now just, just so you know, there's been times in my walk of being a Christian since I've been up here as pastor, God will ask me to read more than I normally do. And then there's times I can go back to what I always read, and he's okay with that. So don't think that you have to do this massive amount just to get God to be okay with where you're at reading-wise and understanding and feeding yourself. Learn to hear what God is saying. Learn to hear what God is doing. And we always got to have a good diet of God's Word. We always got to have a good feeding on that. Now look at what else he says. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Now think about that. We're entering into a spring season where we're going to begin to see things grow. We're going to see buds. And why is that? Because it's planted and because it's watered. And every time something is planted and something is watered, it begins to grow. How many are you going to put in a garden this year? Not yet. But if you put it in a garden, you know you got to water it. It might not rain enough for whatever reason, but you're going to water it. You're going to make sure that it has everything it needs to grow. Why? Because you love the taste of it in the fall. When it gets done growing and produces it, 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 but it, but it won't get there if you don't water it. Just think what's going to happen to you if you don't water your mind, your heart, and your soul with the Word of God. You might not ever produce anything. And then you blame God for not producing something. That's not right. It wasn't God's fault. Why? Because God already knows the word. He doesn't need to read it. You and I do. You and I need to get in that word. And I want to encourage you, no matter where your relationship is with God today, go home and start with just a little bit. Do a little bit more today than you did yesterday. That's all. Take another step today. Why? Because in another six months, you won't even recognize who you are. Because you've been feeding yourself life. I've loved being in the same church for over 32 years now. Because I've got to watch some of you grow. I want God's judgment. And I pray that you learn to look at people that way too. That you wish that they have mercy, not judgment. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for people to stand before a righteous and holy God who didn't care what he thought? Oh my goodness. We don't want to be there. Especially as a believer, you don't want to be there. You might say, well, if I'm a believer, I won't stand in that judgment. Don't be too sure of that. Because you can walk away from God just as easy as anybody else. I can walk away from God, and I can face all kinds of judgment. As a pastor, I get judged more strictly than you do. So sometimes you might not realize how passionate I am about what I do, because I know I'm going to stand before a God, and I'm going to answer and I don't like it to be wrong. I want it to be right. And so God's word helps me do that. So that's why God's word needs to become so important. But this woman, she wanted water that would give her life and life abundantly. And that would come through Jesus Christ and him only. One more scripture and then we're done. John chapter 7. John chapter 7, I want you to begin reading with me in verse 14. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. And the Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? And Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. Get this now, here's the thing. If you and I don't go to the life-giving source to get the information we deliver to people, you might be leading people astray. And that's dangerous ground. That's room for more judgment. So therefore, this is not about uh, just reading some information and then being able to recycle it. This is about reading the Word of God and allowing it to be changing in me. So once it begins to change in me, I have a cistern, I have a reservoir of truth that God's given me that I can give to you. That I can give to you. And I go every day to get this cistern full. So I have more. Walked in a, an amazing realm to be an example for us. He came as the, as the Son of God, born into this world, anointed by the Holy Spirit to do what God the Father said. 
He did that the same way you and I are going to do it. And I pray today that you and I learn to make sure that we get this living water inside of us so that when we have opportunity to go outside, whether it's here or outside of this wa- these walls, I can give you living water. You can give me living water. And that comes through relationship. It comes through spending time with God. It comes, comes with reading his word and making sure that you take time to let the Holy Spirit reveal who he is. Once you get a good picture of that, guess what's going to happen? People are going to begin to see who God is. And there's nothing more enjoyable than watching the light bulb go on when people are saying, oh, I get it. I think I understand God more. Why? Because of what God did through his word in you and in me. So with that, why don't you stand with me? I know you've been sitting for a while. Would you stand and stretch with me and we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you that you truly live up to your name, living water. You have demonstrated since the beginning of time.